welcome to the Goose Swan channel. So I recently finished watching The Rookie and I might be too obsessed with it. I think it's one of the best cop shows I've ever seen and I've honestly seen a bit too much. I genuinely really enjoy the show, both the overall plot, the characters and the episode by episode mini stories. And on top of that, it's surprisingly progressive. And that's not even talking about the racial diversity within the cast or canonically queer characters like Jackson West. I mean, the show tries to tackle subjects like police brutality, systemic racism within policing, and other things like that often. Take the character of James Murray, for example. In season 4, the character of James Murray is introduced when John Nolan and his new T.O. Nyla Harper are sent to do some community policing as punishment. Throughout the episode, Nolan tries to do good for this impoverished minority neighborhood the best he can, but Murray continues to point out how the way the cops and the police force work in general tends to make things worse for the minorities in these very communities. He points out that these cops often make choices for minorities and their communities without truly understanding the situation and end up making things worse. And then when they complain, they get called ungrateful. He makes this point after John opens the door to a closed off park without realizing that the community had closed it themselves to protect the kids from coming in contact with the drug dealers who hang out there and their old dirty needles. Dispatch, can you connect me to city services? City Services, this is Mike. Hey, Mike. Uh, this is Officer John Nolan. I'm standing at a park gate on the 500 block of West Elm with a bike lock on the gate. Is that you guys? A bike lock? No way. So you wouldn't have an issue if I took it down? I did. Yeah. Are the kids using it? Yeah, luckily my oldest found the dirty needles in the sandbox before little kids played in it. I had no idea. Did you at any point stop to wonder why the lock was even there? Those lights have been busted for a year. Do you know what happens in a dark public park? Yes, drug dealers. Yeah, and junkies and who the hell knows what else. We locked the park to keep them out. We could have helped. You should have called 911. To do what? Clear them out from the night, maybe kill someone in the process. We're not all trigger happy. I mean, most of us want to help. I don't know about most. But I can't roll the dice that a good cop is going to show up. So we found our own solution. The lock was there to protect us, to protect our kids. Look, you shouldn't have to trade a place to play for safety. No. We shouldn't, but we do. And the show takes these points in stride and genuinely tries to give them the light of day. There's a real attempt to argue that there are big problems in policing that affect minorities, that victimize them. And Nolan actually learns from this moment. James is not made out to be an antagonistic villain or some unreasonable Karen, but someone with knowledge that Nolan simply doesn't have. Nolan and the rest of Mid Wilshire start to do more community policing from this point on, and the community center makes brief appearances in the rest of the show. Another great example is Nolan's ethics teacher in season 3, Professor Fiona Ryan. Ryan's appearances on the show offer much more direct criticism against the policing system and how it could substantively be changed. So much is made clear on her ride along in the episode Amber. Throughout the course of the episode, Professor Ryan brings up a litany of criticisms against the police system, which she debates with both Nolan and Harper. And like before, there are some real criticisms not only brought up, but genuinely debated between Fiona and the two cops. They both give ground, and while it seems like it at times, Fiona is never really portrayed as this unrealistic, head-in-the-clouds activist who doesn't really have a clue about what's really happening on the field. In particular, the Camden experiment is brought up. In short, it was an experiment first performed in Camden, New Jersey. In essence, the entire department was fired and underwent forced background checks before they could be hired again, basically in an attempt to root out any bad apples. And while Nyla gives some pushback in regards to the practicality of implementing it in a city like LA... We'd be coming back to a gutted force. I mean, you would be down 10%, maybe 20 but you would be coming back to a better force. And what about the kid that goes missing the day we're all fired? I mean, it wouldn't happen overnight. It would happen gradually in stages. But without major action, things will never get better. She nonetheless agrees that it's not an entirely ridiculous idea on its face. And, you know, that's cool. The show actually allows itself, its characters, to acknowledge the faults in policing. They allow them to see that not everything they do, everything the police in general do, is right. Nyla doesn't even attempt to respond when Fiona brings up the issue of innocent black kids getting shot by cops. I feel the same way every time another black kid gets shot by police. Yet, something is off, right? Not quite anything rotten, but 
something is smelling strange. And I think I know what. Because for all of the signaling the rookie does give to police criticism and reform, there's an aspect of it that the show kind of refuses to engage with. And that's the whole systemic part. Many of the police criticisms the show gives the light of day to are individualistic ones. Problems caused by single bad apples that the force is simply unequipped to deal with. And nowhere is that more obvious than in the whole Doug Stanton plotline. Throughout a decent chunk of the show's first season, Jackson West gets a new T.O. after Angela Lopez graduates to detective. In her place is Doug Stanton, Jackson's new, cool and less strict T.O. who will teach him for the last few months of his rookie year. And at first Jackson likes the guy, like I said, he seems more relaxed, more casual, and Jackson feels like he's pretty much ready to graduate to P1 anyway. And then Stanton begins being racist. I don't have the time nor the will to tell you every single instance of this guy being racist, so I'll just give you a quick rundown of what happens. Basically, Stanton is a serial profiler. He's a biased, racist, crooked cop who regularly profiles people of color and will arrest an innocent black man at gunpoint to reach his quota. Hey, LAPD, show me your hands. So show me your hands, now! What the hell? I didn't do anything! I didn't do anything! Roll over, what dumbass, on your belly! This lady! Oh, Kids behind you! Why are you covering me? Your safety in hours. My, my safety! All in all, he's the picture-perfect bad apple officer. This plotline reaches a boiling point when Jackson, who's been getting increasingly frustrated with his inability to do anything to Stanton, gets caught in an ambush. Stanton, knowing that Jackson is probably plotting on his downfall, leaves him to get his ass kicked in by four dudes twice his size and basically leaves him for dead. And so now Jackson is at a crossroads. Professor Ryan offers to go public with his story of Stanton's racism and blatant disregard for his rookie's safety, ensuring that the crooked cop will be punished in some way. But his commander urges him not to, and he doesn't make a bad point. Like he says, police departments are masters at circling their wagons, and even if Doug himself gets fired, it could ruin Jackson's career. Yet despite that, this is where I think the show makes the wrong choice, because Jackson doesn't go public, and Stan doesn't get fired either. No. Instead, this happens. As you all know, I have instituted new training protocols with the goal of moving us towards a more modern approach on policing. We're going to watch and discuss a new training video about ensuring your partner's safety. Control 7 out of 7, A to B, I'm out with 3. Copy, right behind you. Stop where you are. Look, you guys do not want to do this. Look, stop where you are. This is not what it looks like. Yes, it is. This is the truth about Doug Stanton. What kind of cop he is. One who won't have your back when you need it the most. Come on, guys. Come on, you, you know me. They do now. This is the last we ever see of Doug Stanton, and by the end of the season, spoilers, Jackson West is dead. This plotline is over, and we don't really touch on the racism inherent in policing ever again. But arguably, we never did, because Doug Stanton is the picture-perfect bad apple officer, and he's nothing more than that. You see, the show refuses to acknowledge any of the systemic incentives that basically reward racism and bias in policing. I could explain it myself, but let's just take a look at this short clip from Innuendo Studios' incredible video, The Cost of Doing Business. A police officer may not be personally racist, but when it's the end of the month and they need to hand out a few more tickets to make quota, it's safest to do so in a low-income neighborhood where the average driver can't make their life hell by hiring a lawyer. And due to decades of racist redlining, most low-income neighborhoods are disproportionately black and Latine, so... Like Dan says in this very video, any one police officer may not be racist in their heart. And while Doug himself might be, it doesn't really matter. Because policing doesn't just attract racism, it's built for it. And so are so many systems. 
but the rookie would have you believe that what the police really need is the power to adequately fire those bad apples. If only we could fire every Doug Stanton in the country, then the biased arrest numbers would meet back in the middle and black people would get arrested just as much as white people. And if all the Stantons just got fired, then young black men would stop getting disproportionately killed in police shootings. It's just all these bad apples. Even the Camden experiment, which is the most substantive criticism that gets any light in the show, is neutered of its most important policies. Yes, Camden's entire police department did get sacked and was then forced to reapply for their jobs, but also the new department did away with ticket quotas and put a much greater focus on the community. Cops were urged to connect with the people of Camden and to actually make the community feel safe, not to make it feel like a police state. And that's what I really feel the show fails to face. The problems with policing are bigger than individual racist cops. Yes, the Doug Stanton of the world should be fired and should not be anywhere near any position of power, but you don't have to be Doug Stanton to be a bad cop. The systems in place make sure of that. And so if we want policing to change or if we even still want it to be around, cops shouldn't be soldiers. They should be guardians. Anyway, I hope this video made sense. I actually did a decent amount of research for it, and I hope it showed because I actually didn't know that much about the Camden experiment or specific police reform policies before. Like I said in the start of this video, I really do like The Rookie, and I can't wait for Season 7. I genuinely love the character work. I love Nathan Fillion and everything he's in, and I think the show keeps getting better at doing, like, an actual plot. <laughs> Either way, that's enough yapping for me. If you did like this video, consider subscribing or maybe pledging to my Patreon. And without any further begging, I'll see you guys in the next video. I told a baddie to sit on my lap. Say that she's sad, okay, tell me about that. I keep the weight of the roll of my back. If it could stop you from feeling so bad, yeah. Yeah, feel like the sun cause the light coming back. Say you can do it, my hand on your back. Say that I love you, just hold on to the top.